You've probably seen the PD Toots tutorials about creating 3D image cubes in PowerDirector's Title Designer. If you have used the overlays used to cube images, you may have found that process very time consuming. The tool I'm showing you here makes the preparation for that a little easier. It's called the PD Toots 6 Cube Photo Cutter. The file name is PDT6EPC and we'll just call it Photo Cutter from now on. First of all, it's important to know there are limitations inherent to this program which only allows BMP or bitmap, GIF, JPEG, EMF, and WMF file types. The biggest drawback is its inability to load PNG files and it can only save BMP files. Let's get started by opening a file so we can explore the preferences, features, and tools. In the file menu, under preferences, we have two options. Ignore save notice. When you save or cube an image, a box will appear telling you where the files are being saved. Note, I use the term save and cubed interchangeably. Ignore not cubed notice. When you try to open a new file or close photo cutter, a box will appear telling you it hasn't been saved and asks if you want to or not. In the tools menu, we have the following. A choice of four cubes or six cubes. You may also select the number of cubes by using the F4 or F6 keys. Then we have a selection of one through four pixel border or custom. This is the number of pixels between cubes. I created this program using one and two megapixel images so the selection of one to four pixels was reasonable. Then moving into three megapixel and higher I found the need for the custom option to add more space between the cubes. You can also select 1 through 4 with your numbers on your keyboard or 5 for the custom option. Everything in the help menu is self-explanatory. Let's take a look at the status bar. Going from left to right we have the dimensions of the loaded image, the position of the cursor on the image, the path and file name of the image as it will be when saved. As you can see, a number has been added. Then we have a display of the current size of the border. If you were to click in this area, it would automatically select the custom size as related to the size of the image. And then we have the image zoom factor. Let's play with moving and resizing the cubes. There are two ways. One way is click and drag. The lower right corner will resize all the cubes. The upper left corner will move all the cubes. If you accidentally move the cubes off the image, all the cubes turn red. If you're really crazy, you can move both corners off the image. Then what? The other way to adjust the cubes is two-handed. Hold down the control key and move the cursor the cubes will move accordingly. Hold down the shift key and the cubes will resize accordingly. An additional note, if you move and size the cubes to your liking but the cubes are red, as long as you can see the borders of the cubes it's okay. The photo cutter includes pixels under the border of the cube. This has to do with the internal math used while resizing the cubes so yeah it's a program glitch. Well, I think we're ready to save or cube this image. You'll notice the original file name is displayed in the file name box. This is your opportunity to change the name if you want. You will see a progress notification during the cubing process. When complete, we will have six new files lettered A through F. Let's say we want to adjust the cubes and recube the image. Go ahead and do it. The photo cutter we'll see that we already have some cubes and it will make a new sequence. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching and happy cubing!